Hello witches, wizards and those who are yet to receive their Hogwarts school letters, welcome to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is the YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes for all the food and drink featured inside. If you missed last week's recipe for our Hogwarts inspired Christmas cake, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. But it's Magic Monday, so let's see what's up next. Still got room for more food after that Christmas feast? Well, you've come to the right place. If you don't want to miss a thing from my Harry Potter kitchen, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you can alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, it's time to get back to the book. Okay, so the Christmas feast might be over, but there's still plenty more food to come. Over the next few pages, Harry is making good use of his invisibility cloak, going to the restricted section, and then he finds the mirror of Erised, gets a bit obsessed with it over the next few days as he sees his parents, but he gets caught by Dumbledore who tells him that it's being moved to a new home. No more food, so we'll jump on over to chapter 13, Nicholas Flamel. And this is the chapter where Hermione puts two and two together and works out the connection between Flamel and the Philosopher's Stone. This chapter also has another Quidditch game and just towards the end, Harry overhears Snape and Crawl having an argument and I can see our next recipe. Everyone's waiting for you in the common room. We're having a party. Fred and George stole some cakes and stuff from the kitchens. The cakes just keep on coming. For this recipe, you will need 16 ounces of butter, 16 ounces of golden caster sugar, eight eggs, 16 ounces of self-raising flour, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, half a teaspoon of mixed spice, and food coloring in red, green, yellow, and blue. For our icing, you'll also need 8 ounces of butter, 16 ounces of icing sugar, 1 teaspoon of caramel or butterscotch extract, and 1 tablespoon of milk. And then to finish this off, you'll also need some fondant and some food colouring. If you thought I would have run out of Harry Potter cake themed ideas by now, you would be wrong. I've got plenty more up my... Yeah, never mind. Anyways, today, as everyone is in the Hogwarts house spirit playing Quidditch, I thought we'd make a Hogwarts crest cake stacked up with all four houses and then we're going to decorate it with the crest on top to show a bit of house pride. First things first of course we need to make our sponges. These are going to be vanilla and then we're going to sandwich them with our butterscotch or butter beer icing. So let's get baking. To begin you want to cream your butter and sugar together until it's light and fluffy. Crack your eggs into a jug and then whisk them until they're well combined. Slowly add these into your mixture, alternating with tablespoons of flour if the mixture begins to curdle. Once all your eggs are incorporated, add in your flour, along with your vanilla and mixed spice. Give this a good mix until it's nice and smooth. You then want to split your mixture into four bowls and then colour them into the colours of our Hogwarts houses. That's red for Gryffindor, green for Slytherin, yellow for Hufflepuff, and blue for Ravenclaw. We're going to bake the sponges into square tins, so I'm going to grease and line these with baking paper, add in our cake batter, smooth it down, and then bake them in the oven for 15 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. You'll know they're done when a skewer comes out clean. Okay, so while our cakes are baking, you can move on to making your icing. And as I mentioned, we're gonna sandwich this with a butter beer buttercream ice. That is a bit of a tongue twister. Butter beer buttercream icing, butter beer buttercream icing, yeah! To make your simple buttercream icing, all you need to do is add your butter into your mixing bowl, add a little bit of icing sugar, and then whisk it until it's nice and smooth. Slowly add in the rest of your icing sugar, whisking it on a slow speed until it's incorporated and then speed it up until it's light and fluffy. Once all the icing sugar is incorporated, you can add in your milk and your butterscotch flavorings and then give it another mix. Once the cakes are nice and cool, you want to level them off and then we're gonna use a stencil to cut them into our Hogwarts crest shape. I've cut this out on baking paper and then placed it over the cakes and cut around them with a serrated knife. 
Once they're all ready to go, it's time to stack the cake. So place your first layer down and then spread an even layer of your buttercream over the top. Sandwich your next cake on top and then repeat the process until you've finished. Once they're stacked, we're going to crumb coat them with a thin layer of our icing. And this is just going to trap in all of those crumbs to make sure we get a nice clean finish. Once you've got an even coat, all you need to do is pop this into the fridge for about an hour to set. After that, take it out and place a second coat over the top and this one should be nice and clean. Make sure you work the icing into those grooves so we maintain the Hogwarts crest shape. Okay, so that is the hard part done. Our cakes are baked, iced and stacked and all we need to do now is finish the decoration. But before we move on, I've got a little comment competition for you. There is a reason that I've stacked the sponges in this order. Let me know down below in the comments if you can work out why. Once the cake is set, we can move on to the final decorations. For this, I've got some brown fondant to give it a nice rustic wood effect, and I've rolled this out to about half a centimetre thick. Then I've draped it over the cake and then evened it down the sides. Make sure you secure the top first, just so the fondant doesn't rip, and then smooth it down the sides, working it into those grooves to make sure the shape is nice and defined. Trim off any excess and then smooth your edges. The next step is to work on the background colours of our Hogwarts crest for each of the Hogwarts houses. I've taken some more icing in the four colours, rolled them out to half a centimetre thick and then cut out a quarter of the crest from each. Place these on top of the brown fondant and then smooth them into place. To bring all four houses together, we're going to add on a gold border. So for this, I've got some gold colour fondant, which I've also rolled out to half a centimetre thick and then taken the same stencil from before, but with some windows cut out and then traced around the outsides and cut out the insides. Line the border up on top and if any of the colours from underneath are coming over the edges, you can trim them back slightly. I've also added some edible glue just to make sure it holds itself in place and then pressed it down. And for some finishing touches, I've rolled out some black fondant and then cut out the initials of each Hogwarts house, as well as a H for Hogwarts. Place these on top of the cake and then remove any excess icing sugar with a little bit of water. The last step is to neaten up the bottom of the cake. So once it's on your board, I've just taken some black buttercream icing in a piping bag and then piped my way around the edges. This is just going to give it a nice professional finish. And we're done. This Hogwarts crest cake is ready for you to show your house pride. You can either just eat your layer or if you want to be friendly, eat the whole thing. So there you go, the Hogwarts house crest cake is complete and it is the best and tastiest way for you to show your house pride. Let me know down below in the comments which house do you belong to and can you work out why I've stacked this cake in this specific order? There is method to the madness, so let me know what you think. That is all for this week's episode, but if you don't want to miss a thing from my Harry Potter kitchen, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. I'll see you next time.